our last speaker of this session is uh, Utkarsh. Um, I, I, I apologize if I hope I got your name right. Um, who uh, is going to tell us about parallel extrapolation methods, and I'll let you get going so we can kind of try to stay on time. So, yeah, sure. <clears throat> so, hi everyone. I'm Utkarsh. So, I'm currently a senior at IIT Kanpur, and I've been majoring into very different fields, electric and chemical, and I've been uh, coming to MIT and working with Julia Lab. So, yeah. So, I believe like let us you know kind of start introducing like what are basically extrapolation methods. So like as like as the name say, it kind of extrapolates the solution. So so I just, you know, have this snippet from the here, like which, which basically, you know, explains all the things very detailed in, in that. So I'll just briefly go through it. Uh, so what extrapolation method does is basically it kind of compute the corresponding step uh, by basically, you know, choosing a, a particular subsequence. And as you can see that it has a, it uh, basically you know extra extrapolates to the t i comma one and which basically kind of eliminates the as many terms that which are possible in the s asymptotic expansion by com computing the interpolation poly polynomial and finally uh, so basically it helps us to you know reach higher orders and it is also a variable step method as well so it kind of operates in both domains and like so these methods are now part of the ordinary dfq uh, system so it supports all of the all of the all of the functionalities that we have the linear sol the threading multi threading as well as some some area which i would be going to discuss like which was uh, kind of you know explained in the here and uh, so as you can see that these are some of the two methods like uh, which are ex one of them is explicit like which don't uh, which, uh, which are basically used for non stiff problems so these are some of the methods that we have and uh, uh, and another methods are the implicit method so that is that would be kind of my focus for this talk and like like we kind of you know identified a domain for domain for these problems and uh, yeah so they are kind they're performing well but yeah the work is in progress and yeah it could get better and uh, coming to that so i'll basically jump right into it like uh, the od code is everything written in the already difficult jail you can check it out and uh, and every implementation is there, but let me, you know, come to that, like how we are parallelizing them. So we basically choose a step number sequence, like as I had already told that we need to, you know, have smaller step size. So that smaller step size extrapolates to the bigger step size that we are taking at that point. Then basically did, uh, then this computation of T K comma one requires two K sequential function evaluations. So this is this kind of a text that I have, uh, is basically kind of error hypothesized. And if we are using, MIMD processors, multiple input, multiple data, then this kind of this serial evaluation can be, you know, uh, processed into K processors and uh, which will basically generate the numerical approximation TKK. And uh, after that, and so basically this kind of parallelizes our code and the, the extrapolation that we are kind of, the final time, time step that we are for kind of, you know, uh, exposes the multi-threading and parallelism apart from apart from the LU factorization that we would have in the implicit implicit method. So, that, so yeah, that being that. And uh, yeah, I have just, you know, put a, uh, put, a, uh, put down some code snippet as well. So as you can see that we are, uh, so we are calling, we are calling the Jacobian 2W on, on the, on a particular thread and which basically uh, performs a linear solve. And, uh, and this linear solve, kind, this linear solve kind of, you know, compute the, compute the step at, at that point. And, then it basically uh, then then this then whole collection of this uh, extra extrapolated variables takes place and we finally uh, reach to the uh, reach to the kind of approximation of the method that we are trying to have. So so what is this? What is so special about like I mean uh, this is like kind of already been uh, you know discussed in books and as well as these methods are quite popular. So what happened is that when we are using large set of ODs so. In case of uh, in a stiff ODs, let me be particular to that. So we will require a, a we'll require a LU factorization that O and cube solve. And what won't happen is that so this is being done by BLAS. So BLAS multi-threading is not so efficient uh, in like let us say like this is kind of a heuristic in uh, less than 100 ODs. So this would require multiple LU factorization that scales like O and cube. So we know that the inverse is kind of you know goes in O and cube. So there would be, uh, let us say that there would be, there would be a cutoff 
that point where it's no, no longer a good idea i mean there is a kind, as we know there is a overhead in the uh, parallelism that we have so and also the jacobian mean, is too small to parallelize in the lu factorization effectively so it becomes a serial solver for sufficiently small problems so in that case like uh, rodas method would be more serially efficient but these methods could expose parallelism to be faster on multi core machines at that point and uh, so that's why our implicit uh, implicit extrapolation methods come into place and we know that uh, blast is already multi threading efficiently so a serial method is already using its all cores and coming to that like as i have already uh, already men mentioned this be, uh, this is basically in, it, it is important in uh, quantitative system ph pharmacology models because these applications use gradient based optimization on stiff systems of size such that the optimization nature requires the parameter choices to be solved serially so thus parallelism needs to be exposed from the solver that's why these extrapolation methods kind of you know work in that in that qsc models domain and we need to you know also take care about the size that we have so yeah coming to that so now basically it's mostly benchmarks now and i'll maybe kind of walk through the benchmarks that we have so this is a rober problem let me come to that first so the rober problem is uh, is a stiff problem and it, it is composed of three odds so this is generally so this benchmark was you know uh, to, took upon uh, taken upon on high tolerances and as you can see that uh, there is implicit error warrant extrapolation method so this is basically a midpoint uh, midpoint method which is that the e, e small step size is using is being computed by the midpoint rule and uh, and uh, this is kind of an and this is implicit so basically as you can see that it is kind of you know uh, uh, kind of performing well and uh, for some tolerances with the roda so which is the best which is the best solver that uh, that the rope problem has so and even even you can see as implicit implicit euler extrapolation so that is that kind of also performs well but uh, as you can see that we have this kind of suite of solvers so that can be you know uh, tailored ac according to your problem that we have how much stiff it is and etc coming to that so this is a qsc model that i would be going to discuss in the next slide so as you can see that this is was computed on low transfer and you can see that this completely beats the other solvers that are in this domain uh, even the rosenbrock and the trbdf code which works in the in, in this um, in this method so so this is the kind of the uh, which basically explains my point like this is the kind of the domain of this uh, methods like and, and where the where the users can benefit from them and uh, coming to that so basically here also implemented this in the fortran as well so these are the sodex and the sivlex method so basically i have i have included a link here so you can check them out so we had a, we have we have good fortran drivers so od interface and od interface dfq as well so that is uh, that is so that is being benchmarked here as you can see that clearly beat the already existing fortran solvers is which kind of you know stands as testimonial to the ordinary dfq solvers that we have like the benchmarks are pretty amazing and you can check them in same same benchmark as well so it kind of amounts to the uh, five five times performance gain so yeah and so it is uh, pretty good according to that so i'll now you know talk about the bruslater problem so basically it's it's kind of a pde which is being semi discretized to generate an od and we can you know we can you know generate generate in, uh, in our own sense like uh, that could be you know that discretization is a want to us and that you know kind of scales that so that problem so that problem size kind of scales as n square so i took this i took this example as well so this is uh, this is stiff so basically demonstrate that the as you can see it, it is near the 100 range so 120 od is pretty near that range and what is happening is that uh, the iron and the threaded versions are being uh, uh, is, are performing very uh, are performing much better than the unthreaded ones so that kind of gives us a 40 to 50 perform 40% to 50 performance gain and uh, and uh, coming to that uh, i mentioned polyester threads there so yeah so basically polyester threads are the cheap threading unit which is being provided by julia sim so uh, courtesy of dr chris elrod so that has been incorporated into them so the overhead uh, overhead basically in this thread multi threading is kind of reduced now so as you can see that uh, comparing uh, comparing the polyester threads over the thread so you can use polyester polyester threads for this use case as well so that is kind of an abi that we have and also 
we uh, also coming to the api we also support uh, sequence step uh, uh, sequence step, maximum order minimum order so these orders can go to very higher orders like around 15 orders uh, and the extra uh, and, and the uh, and basically we can also select the sequences which are the harmonic romber boltish like, like every so what has been you know given given by the book so it uh, supports and it can be you know uh, tuned as per your problem so that is the kind of the aim of providing a comprehensive api to that and uh, yeah so yeah and so basically i also tested with this uh, another method as what is the euler berry centric method so one of one guy uh, i guess he did his thesis in the berry centric extra extrapolation kind of implemented some of the met explicit methods so uh, my job was to you know uh, translate them into implicit methods and we are using berry centric ex extra extrapolation in it so it performs similar to this uh, similar to the hair and warner methods that basically which uses the midpoint method and this uses the euler method and this kind of gives the performance improvement in it and coming to the qsp model that i was talking about so basically uh, with the help of modeling toolkit and systems uh, sbml toolkit.jl so i was able to you know uh, parse the model which is basically qsp model this model describes and compares two models on the egfr signaling so that is kind of a protein receptor thing so i i am not specializing to that but yeah I, uh, so it it kind of has around 109 ods so which basically falls into a domain and as you can see that uh, it it supports all the things in module 2 the structure simplify so that is the uh, i mean the, uh, that is so that is the that is the advantage of building into the siml ecosystem and uh, you can see that it has a it has a very significant 80 per, 80% performance increase with multi threading so you can get so and that uh, that application kind of depends on the number of uh, number of core as well so like how uh, so if you have a higher core count you can you know get, get much more better performance and uh, yeah so i mean you can try these uh, you can try this method the implicit methods on the systems pharma pharmacology model mm, yeah so coming to coming to like summarizing like the thoughts that i have so every method has its pros and cons so the pro let me come to the pros uh, first so basically this is this is good for qsp models having 80 to 100 ods and you, uh, that that range is kind of heuristic like maybe as, as, as i demonstrated in the breast polymer it, it can go to even 120 ods as well so it leverages higher core count apart from the le factorization that that is already being take place so we kind of turn it off uh, turn it off in the implicit method that we have so the every so 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 that the co the cores are being blocked by the LU factorization, so it is good for highly stiff problems and precision. If you want to go for very higher order, very higher order methods, so uh, so uh, these methods are quite good. So you can get good accuracy and precision. So this can go up to 15. The non-threaded version, like I have also demonstrated in the rover problem as well, the non-threaded version performs comparable to with common stiff 4D method. So that is a, I mean, yeah, it's not bad uh, that it is that it has a very trade-off in the performance. But yes. Uh, if, uh, we can you know check on the models that we are building and uh, you know subsequently decide what to do so the con is that like what i feel like the domain is quite restricted i mean uh, they are better better stiff methods available for most of the general problems like uh, like from sundial.gl there is the cvo dvdf method which performs very well and we have an equivalent which is a better method which is the qndf in the in the uh, in the audience difficulty which is, which is completely imp imp implemented in julia and there are the rodas method as well rodas 5 rodas 4 so these are i mean in speaking in a general sense like it is uh, it is kind of domain restricted so this threading overhead becomes significant in, uh, in less than 100 ods so you will the, the solve will be basically be not you know very good and it is overcome by so this so this uh, uh, this uh, overhead does not scale well with the problem so we are uh, when we you know go with a very high very high order problem so then it would you know uh, that performance gain would you know be substituted by that so yeah i mean and we are working on that so and uh, and it is it supports the neliasol.jl new interface with, uh, which iml has so we can use multiple factorization methods and the precondition that that are being built upon on that and yeah so it's some of the work is in work in progress and we are trying to get a preprint and a paper out of it yeah so acknowledgements i I would like to thank all of these people, so which are, which would help and the guidance. So this this is kindly a new venture to me. 
and yeah thank you uh hi uh very nice talk uh, thank you very much and um so uh i guess i i had a question you mentioned a little bit about at the, at the end about kind of what's next but so you so see mm. your, your conclusion is that you felt these methods were kind of a little uh a little restricted in terms of the size of systems yeah. where they, yeah. so so um do you have ideas on how to make them more generalizable or do you think it's better to look at some of these some of the other approaches you know like used by cv uh, yeah i mean I mean, I think some things uh, could be done from the linear solve. Like that is the most expensive step because we are going to the higher orders. So the linear, and we are extrapolating to uh, so higher order. So that linear solve would grow, grow as 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 per that. So maybe some if we use some uh, techniques, some some tricks in the linear solve, so that could be improved. But yes, I I mean yeah, that is kind. But uh, like what analysis we had, so that is kind of uh, restricted to this domain. Uh, 